So the bartender says to the gorilla, uh, you'll have to excuse me, I don't mean to offend you, but we don't get many gorillas in here. And the gorilla looks at the bartender and says, well, at $20 martini, I'm not surprised. Hey, everyone. What's up? <laughs> Welcome back to the lobby. I'm Mike Mahardy, your host. Uh, I was pretty sick of the what's up, everyone. Welcome back to the lobby, GameSpot's weekly video game hangout. It was getting stale. Figured I'd finish off that joke that I started during that intro pre-roll. What's up? I'm glad everybody can join us. Uh, this is Pete Brown, back from, where were you? Portland. Ah, uh, Oregon. Yes. How was that? Birthday weekend, right? Yeah, it was great. Um, girlfriend did a lot of shopping, which made her happy, which then made me feel comfortable about dropping some money on a big game. Yeah. I've been looking at it for a while. Sega Saturn game? Panzer Dragoon Saga. I finally have it. Was it like unopened? No. No. Oh, oh, God. I don't know. This stuff. That would be thousands of dollars. Uh, no, it was great. Ate a lot of good food. Uh, saw some snow, so... Oh, so what you spent was reasonable, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, my girlfriend offered to split it because she's awesome. Cool. And well, happy birthday. Wait, when is your birthday? It was Monday. So oh. I'm now 32 years young. Mm. I'm saying that now. because I'm old. You've got, you got a year on me. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Eric Tay, this is your first time in the new lobby set, but you yeah. work on every single lobby episode. Correct. And you've been on the lobby. Uh, I have not. It's pretty funny. Every time you're on, people in the chat are always like, oh, they're probably talking about Destiny. and. Fair. <laughs> We're talking about it's Destiny. The, it's the three Ds, right? It's Destiny, Division, or Diablo, usually. Anyways. Yeah. Three Ds. Three, three, three D, D's. Tay. Three D, yeah. Here we are on the lobby. You can watch it in three D now, which is pretty cool. No. Just kidding. Callie Plaggy, what's hey. up? Hey, hi. You're here all the time. I, I yeah, I'm usually here. You also like Destiny a lot. I, I know do. It pretty well. I play a lot of Destiny. We have both of our Destiny experts I on like, the panel today. I like shooting stuff in space. It's kind of my thing. Yeah, we got the uh, teaser image. I'll get into the newsreel that teaser image uh, released for Destiny Two. Uh, it leaked a while ago. There's that poster from like an Italian website leaked it. Lego.com. <laughs> Lego. It's probably huh? not Lego.com. <laughs> it's like, no, it's Lega. Uh, yeah. Lega. Thank okay. you. Lego. Wrong <laughs> syllable at the end. I used the masculine form of the word. Sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, we do have some pretty cool stuff going on today. Uh, Hunter Pence, the right fielder for our hometown, San Francisco Giants, is going to be in to stream MLB 17 with our uh, Nick Margarita. So they will be doing that right at 12.30 p.m. Yep. Pacific mm -hmm. time. Uh, okay. So we will finish up the lobby at a reasonable time so you guys can all get ready for that. Expect even, hijinks. Yeah. If, even if you're not super into mm -hmm. sports games, uh, which we don't really talk about on this show, that's fine because I'm sure Nick Margarita will screw it up somehow. No, I'm just jo <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Nick Margarita and Hunter Pence are both very entertaining people. Uh, they're going to be doing some creative character uh, shenanigans, and I'm sure I'll watch it. So stick around after the lobby for that. Uh, and then, as usual, the Triforce, or no, yeah. sorry, just Triforce, yeah. our Zelda Breath of the Wild stream show with mm -hmm. uh, Rob Hanlery and this year Pete Brown will be tomorrow at what time? 11 o'clock. Cool. In the morning. And I'm sure GameSpot will be tweeting and reminding everybody about that. About that. But that'll be on Twitch, YouTube. Uh, you can catch up on that. It's just they kind of take an hour every week to try doing new stuff in Zelda, but with the end game of eventually, in the long run, killing Ganon, right? Eh, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. see. Happens. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget, she's got Ghost in the Shell coming I up. Do, oh, yeah, you're yeah. watching Ghost in the Shell tonight. Yes, I'm seeing Ghost in the Shell. Um, if you subscribe to GameSpot Universe on YouTube, um, we'll have several things going up around that. So if you're interested in that movie or the anime, then check it out. Cool. Uh, yeah, you and Chastity Vicencio will be going tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of anime girls. Cool. The best girls. Sweet. Uh, we... Let's get right into the newsreel. Uh, we do have a giveaway and also something, a news item that's related to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Mafia 3, there's a free trial releasing and then alongside the uh, new DLC coming out. So, do we get to model? We've had these in our uh, oh, Nick yeah. Margarita <laughs> Memorial Library for a while. Uh, here, I'll have yeah. you guys model that. Yay. It's a collector's edition. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, it comes with the that like an mp3 slash vinyl player it comes with the vinyl what size is that vinyl do you remember you would know this better than i would pete it's probably it, it was a smaller one. Oh, seven inch seven inch vinyl I don't know. uh don't take my word for that but there is a vinyl with uh, like eight songs from the soundtrack for this game um you can play that and it works and you can also hook up your phone through like an auxiliary port uh we have one of these in the office but we only have xbox <laughs> one unfortunately the ps4 one we did an unboxing for when this game released back in <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. Yeah. Thank you, John Luke. <laughs> Me and my dog tags on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's everything right there. That's the splayed out image. Uh, hopefully, he'll take this photo down in a second. <laughs> no, no. Thank you. Just keep it uh, yeah, so today, GameSpot will be <laughs> tweeting uh, about this giveaway. You can uh, follow GameSpot and retweet said tweet, and then later in the week, they will pick a winner. Uh, if you want this for Xbox One, maybe you'll win it. So do that. Cool. 
Uh, also, ugh, in other news, uh, Destiny 2 teaser image. We're going to be getting into Destiny 2 later on for a segment, but the Destiny 2 teaser image officially released. There's no official release date from Bungie yet, although there is a leaked one, and everything up to this point has been true based on those leaks, so uh, we will see. We will get more into the game later, what we want from Destiny 2. We don't really have any concrete evidence. We know just as much as you do, but we want to get into that later on. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But now you know what I want to talk about? <laughs> I want to talk about everything. Sweet. Everything. Anything and everything. Yeah. If someone hit me with something. Let's talk about it. Anything? Everything. <laughs> the game Everything released last, last week or two weeks ago for PS4. Uh, I played week. a good deal amount of it last week on PS4. This is a weird game. We want to talk about what kind of game it is and what you do in it and what is going on. I haven't played it. From what I understand, though, you can embody anything and everything. Pretty much. Up uh, to the galactic level on the on the upper tier yes. or on the molecular level. Oh, my God. Down to bears. Yeah, look at that bear go. So, yeah, that's how everything moves in the game. Um, did, <laughs> in your time, did you find that this expression <laughs> amounts to anything? It does not. It didn't get old yet <laughs> because uh, you start... In, this, in a tutorial area, and you go around, so you don't always start as the same animal. So I started as an oxen in the desert. Uh, and I was walking around talking to rocks and palm trees and uh, little mesas, and they were telling me uh, what was going on, because I had no idea. Yeah. And they were just saying, some, some of these haikus that were explaining what was happening, and then I was hoarding up with other oxen and speeding up, as you can see they're doing here with these black bears. So, but then, and I know the answer, but what is the point? Uh... You know the answer? Well, I know Please the answer. Please tell me, because I don't know. <laughs> I, you, it's just exploring what? and kind of, okay. what is the end objective, you mean? <laughs> no, what's the point of it all, Mike? Uh, why, why would you engage in this game? Just to explore and be different things. I mean, look, you can be this. Is it not I mean, to understand your place in the universe? I guess so, and yeah. to see different perspectives. I was going to yeah. say, isn't asking what the point of this game the point of this game? Exactly. Um, so. Also, the title is super weird for SEO. Like, I don't know how yeah. you yeah. how do you Google every, everything game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I've been following this game for a while because when I first heard of it, I was like, wait, you can inhabit a coffee cup. You can inhabit a banana. You can do anything. Um, but I know there's like some sound bites from a British philosopher whose name is escaping. Alan right Watt. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like that would get really, I don't like heavy handed stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, how, how have you? I haven't encountered any of that yet. Oh. I listened uh, to a little bit of it mm -hmm. in the, the video coverage we have. And he basically starts going on that like, okay, you know, we look at animals as just animals, right? But to them, if you imagine what, you know, how we consider ourselves human, animals think that they're human. Not like us but an equivalent in their eyes and so it's experiencing these perspectives of everything that you know where anything can literally feel like it's important and have a place in the world and it just mm -hmm. depends on your scale and you know perspective and location and all that so i've not gone down to this molecular level here i went up to the galaxy is the highest you can go you can't go past into like a what, what's after that like a star cluster no <laughs> star clusters in a galaxy whatever you can't go to like a universal level because they wouldn't be able to show that uh but eventually, you know, you can be a continent, you can be icy landmass, and then you can go across the ocean, come up to a desert landmass, and then you can go down into the molecular level of that desert landmass, passing through camels and rocks and mesas and palm trees and a lot of things. And I haven't inhabited anything man-made yet, but this gameplay trailer, this is a gameplay trailer we're watching from a PlayStation blog, I believe, a few months ago. You can like inhabit a spaceship. It looked like later on in this, mm. uh, and what by trailer I mean like gameplay trailer. But life goals. What'd you say? Life goals. Yeah. <laughs> you can. It looked like you could be a spaceship, and then it's funny when you're a plant, you don't uh, move around as like a herd or anything. You actually just kind of grow in a line. Like a new tree will pop up in a set path. So and here you see this camel is kind of in this <laughs> weird uh, deciduous forest, uh, joining up with other camels. Uh, with strange um, markings. Um, <laughs> and now you see an oak tree, and now you're a pretty, you're a rose. Uh, if you're a continent, can you cause an earthquake? I don't know. Like a tsunami across the ocean? Yeah. Can you just like really mess everything up? That'd be pretty cool as long as you're not hurting anyone. Uh. <laughs> Do the hearts actually signify anything, or is it just when you like switch to something else? Uh, no, those are when you 
uh, when you're an animal, you can group up with an other similar animals. Uh, uh, here's a landmass. So you see it moving across the ocean expanse. Unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. You can see this is running on uh, Unreal Fort. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> this game is, it was weird. I think it was, I kind of grouped it in almost, and Rob Hanley brought this up after playing Abzu last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't know, I brought up the flower or journey comparisons almost. And it's kind of meditative playing this game. Right. Because here you become a life supporting planet. <laughs> I mean, I don't, they don't call it Earth, I don't believe. This does have like an autoplay mode, right? Where you can just sort of let it do its own thing. Oh, I don't know. I didn't do that. Yeah, there uh, is Andrew over at PlayStation, uh, Andrew Kelly, he uh, was tweeting about that, uh, which sounds kind of interesting. Like I almost <laughs> might like just to have it on at my desk, just to yeah. have like this weird biome thing going on next to me. Blue yeah. Drago in the YouTube chat just said, if I wanted science, I'll go and get a book. <laughs> 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 right there with you. <laughs> oh, I had fun with well, this. Oh. Eric Green in YouTube's kind of got a good point. It's like, it pretty much is kind of like I am, uh, I am bread, right? Except you're just other stuff, mm. and you can just keep changing into other stuff. I mean, like, there's obviously yeah. a little bit more complexity to it, but well, and they all. definitely try to rope in like philosophy as a big part of it. Um, I mean, that's the part that gives me pause because, like, that's the part I. I liked least about the witness, for example, is yeah. when you like have to start listening to all the philosophy. And I was like, no, I was thinking my own philosophy. I was having my own thoughts. Yeah, um, that stuff gets heavy handed. Yeah, and so I think it's interesting. It's sort of like an art installation, I think, is how GameSpot's reviewer described it. Um, but I think it's it would be better left to you kind of reflecting on it. And, oh, if it is about how everything in the world is interconnected, then that's for you to extrapolate from it. I don't need somebody to tell me that, and I don't need to have the philosophy fed to me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? <clears throat> kind of it, telling and not showing. Yeah, I think that's what disrupts the the cool, like the interesting thing about it for me, because it's like, oh, you know, I don't think I would ever spend too much time with this, but the if I spent, you know, 30 minutes with it, that time is valuable um, <laughs> from what I can... These garlic cloves? I mean, you yeah, <laughs> yeah, can also just be silly. <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't know. It it's it's strange to me. I feel my, like it's unfinished or something, like an no. unfinished thought. Mm -hmm. My concern is that because there's so much to be, uh, it's overwhelming me in the sense that No Man's Sky did at first. I was like, what's the point of seeing anything if you could see everything? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Um, clearly, some Cooper made that barrel, uh, and then you transfer <laughs> into a lion. <laughs> that uh, the design choice to make them move like that. I wonder what's behind that. It's got to be just as a joke, or it, it, it. I can only assume otherwise that it's a means to just get this game out. Is that <laughs> that works? Not we can just flip. Yeah. Lion growing, just yes. What I, on earth? <laughs> as a lion will. For those just joining, this is uh, the uh, desert level from Call of Duty Two. No, this is <laughs> everything. Uh, an odd game. It's part of the the play collective Sony's yeah. doing this spring with uh, I don't know, I guess it's not like artistic games only because Rain World is a part of it as well, but certainly like offbeat experiences. I'm, it's definitely experimental. Um, I oh my gosh, this is they so distracting. I can't handle. Oh, the yeah, give I me mean, more. I need it. That's another thing that's weird to me is like if it is for comedic effect, like if it is sort of breaking down um, traditional mechanics the way something like like. Th I am bread, which Aaron, Eric yeah. Green in the YouTube chat brought up. Um, it's weird. It's at odds with the more kind of reflective, introspective, right. uh, philosophical stuff, and that's what's weird to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. But also, yeah. like when your plants or when they just show those butterflies, it looks pretty beautiful the way they're moving. And uh, these sperm cells here, as you can see, I don't know what <laughs> what else would you call those? Those are not <laughs> swimmers. Oh my god. Well, I know what else you would call <laughs> sperm cells. Saying what else would those be? Uh, here we Totals. go. Turtles. I like those. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you set it up and uh, you alley -ooped me on that one. Oh, here we go. So now we're getting into more uh, man made. What was that art movie about the pro uh, Koya Niskatsi? Oh, damn it. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say that as a joke. I was going to say yeah. that. <laughs> no, <I'm serious. laughs> I had to watch that for an art writing class yeah. that I took against my will. Uh, sure. And the <laughs> What do you mean, sure? I know you. Okay, and it was super about like it starts off showing these uh, pastoral sublime kind of landscapes and all of a sudden there's farms cropping up and then all of a sudden there's a city and then there's yeah. Did pollution. you watch Pawakatsi as well? No. There's like three movies in that series. They're all a bit much. 
Okay, art school boys. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to art school. <laughs> what are they talking about? I studied journalism. Okay. All right, here we have lightning bugs and fish. Oh, here we go. Okay, Boats. so there. I have not gotten to the point where I was using man-made stuff. I don't know, and there's a spaceship. I don't know if that's a, one of the cases where that's a matter of playing, in, like a matter of time in the game where the game itself progresses, or if I could go do that right now if I take the right path through the what right number of items. On? What? This looks normal. This looks like <laughs> a, uh, an I Spy book. Oh, <laughs> Oh, the bears God. in space. Oh no, is he okay? <laughs> is he okay? I would think oh, giant frog. Oh. I don't like amphibians. The hypno toad. Playing a harp with a violin. <laughs> That's sick. Um, this is pretty cool. I haven't seen anything like this before. Neither have I. See, oh, that's I what I'm saying. Does the universe deteriorate in this game? <laughs> is the time sped up? This is. I, I have <laughs> not yeah. seen this yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is new to all of us at once. And uh, yeah, no, like I said, the uh, the Does LSD come comes sold yeah. separately. Yeah, <laughs> so PlayStation could not supply that for you, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I don't know what kind of music would accompany this one. I mean, they have ambient music, but what kind of music would you play for that? Yeah. Ragtime, <laughs> <laughs> Motown, Soul. <laughs> that would be weird. That game is weird. Mm -hmm. So the question I wanted to ask is, what kind of game is this? And I'm more confused now than I was at the beginning of this segment. It's a yeah, I don't know. It's an introspective game? I mean, it's experimental and it's yeah. it's about exploration more than it is anything. I think that's the central conceit right. is just like doing what you feel like doing. Follow your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Twitter, Jobo underscore GM asked, is the concept of everything enough to sustain interest for longer play durations? That's kind of what I was wondering. Uh, I don't think I would play this game long for the same reason I'm playing a lot of Persona 5. It would It's... I'm not feeling rewarded for it. Again, it's more meditative for me, and it's kind of just seeing what will happen. Yeah. I mean, not every game has to be something you'll spend a lot of time with. I mean, some of my favorite games are games that I spent, you know, an hour with, and it was one and done, and then I was like, that was so cool, and it made me really think about a lot of things, and I mean, I think this has the potential to do that, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's a little too abstract for me. I'm kind of like, I... I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting out of this besides being like, whoa, molecules are so small. <laughs> I feel like more than most games, you have to be in the right mindset to play it and yeah. get something out of yeah. it. Yeah. Tay, this game seems right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there a gear to farm? Yeah. You know the, can you can you min max these <laughs> flowers? The universe is the the truest MMO. Ah. So. Uh. Uh. Whoa. <laughs> On that note, I don't think I can say anything more profound than that. Uh, I kind of. I don't know if I'll play more of this game. I want to, but I also have a lot of other games to play. And again, I feel like I saw everything, <laughs> but I, I know I didn't, but I kind of want to get to the point where I'm inhabiting these artificial things, these ships, these spaceships, v vessels, if, if you, you will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but anyway, let us know uh, if you plan on playing this amid all the other releases. Uh, this is available on PlayStation and I believe it's coming to PC soon. Sure. Sick. <laughs> Uh, you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I, it is coming to PC soon, and you can check it out on that. Let us know what you think about everything. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. StarCraft Remastered got announced. <laughs> this game's a little more succinct. Uh, <laughs> RTS. That's a weird way to describe StarCraft. Yeah. I know. Well, compared to everything. Eric. Yes. You like StarCraft. I do. Did you play the original a lot? Yeah, I played uh, the original on Brood War a lot in high school. Um, and I think I felt like as I was growing up, at least for me, I played a lot more RTS games than mm -hmm. I do now. Yeah. I don't think that outside of when StarCraft II first came out, I've really touched any RTS since um, back then with Command and & Conquer and right. StarCraft and stuff like that and WarCraft. Um, so it's interesting to see it get remastered. But for the longest time, this rumor has been kind of lingering and you kind of felt like it was going to happen. Yeah. So I'm just interested to see if people still care, I well, guess. I mean, like when that game came out, uh, and maybe this reflects your experience or not, but like a lot of LAN party situations around StarCraft, you know, like I used to play Magic and I'd go to my local like game shop to like, you know, sit down and play some cards, but there, there was also like a row of 12 computers. And like, this was the game that I really identified with as, you know, competitive PC gaming, like at first. Like, yeah, there was kind of, you know, there was like Quake and stuff back yeah. then, but this this really kicked it off. Um, and definitely took off more than something like Command and Conquer. I mean, there were so many different Red Alert and Command and yeah. Conquer games that like they all kind of blended together. But StarCraft always had its own real strong identity. And for all the series, well, for all the series that Blizzard has Blizzard has exploited, this one hasn't really been. I feel like it hasn't been tapped. Like 
Starcraft 2 has been out now for what? Six, seven years? I think something like that. Three expansions. Three expansions, yeah. and that's that's kind of it. And there was two expansions for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Brood War and Yeah. Uh, no, it was just Brood War. 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 Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's a lot of potential. Maybe people missed out on this game back in the day. Well, for the longest time I was joking, they're gonna do the next MMO for Blizzard. It's gonna be Space of Starcraft. <laughs> you know? That like, would be red. You know, well, but what was the, that didn't happen. What was the third person <laughs> shooter game? Ghost. The, Ghost, yeah. Yeah. That, that didn't come canceled, out either. Right? Yeah. yeah. Or that never officially got cancelled, but it's not out how many years later? Ten. So it's probably not gonna happen. No. It might though. Who knows? Um Starcraft, yeah, just for uh like running through the specs. Uh base game and brood war that is uh included. It's gonna be four K ultra high definition, which they showed during that trailer. Yeah, I mean they show the the wipe kind of and they showed it to the wider resolution too, right? Mm -hmm. Um and then it'll have matchmaking. Uh we do have a question from Bob Jones, he's a GameSpot regular, but on Twitter he was asking, How much will it cost and can I play it offline? Uh, they have not announced pricing yet. They've said it's going to be out this summer, so I'm assuming we'll see more soon. We don't know anything either. Um, in terms of playing it offline, I would assume you could play the campaign offline. I don't think you... Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you can't match make, but... <laughs> that and maybe if you could land, possibly. Yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know if that's No one offline. really lands anymore. That's true. Yeah. Nobody lands anymore. It was For me, <laughs> land was uh, Halo and then Warcraft 3, the mods, tower defense mods. Yeah. Uh, Winter Mall. That was, that was the best. That was the peak of my... Uh, niche tower defense hobby, <laughs> <laughs> and then Assassin's Creed uh, Revelations came along and had tower what? defense, so it ruined it for me. Um, um, I have a question for you. Sure. <laughs> All right. Just going Hit off me. of that, um, I mean, Peter, you were talking about uh, StarCraft kind of kicking off uh, competitive PC, like what we think of as competitive PC gaming. Does going back to it have the same effect? Like, does returning to it? have the same value or does it have like what is the value there i think that it's not really going to get that many new people because you probably would have just played starcraft 2 if you're going to play an rts mm -hmm. i think it's the nostalgia feeling yeah that like a lot of people will have with starcraft and in some people's minds they actually like starcraft and brood war more than <clears throat> excuse me more than starcraft 2 so i could see that potentially coming into play maybe esports i don't know they're going to try. Know. They're going to try because they still have. This, yeah. I think I, I think that they'll try because they had a lot of StarCraft 2 um, up and coming pros and, and pros that came over from the Brood War scene. Sure. Okay. So mm -hmm. maybe they'll be more like invitationals or yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like, like one off thing, yeah. kind of things like that. Right, but yeah. um, it's hard to say. I did do the land thing like you did with StarCraft yeah. and, and Counter-Strike. Those two were the games that yeah, we kind of right. ping pong between yeah. if we went to a land cafe. And I don't know. I don't. It's it's a weird timing. <laughs> I'd rather have. What? That was just a funny way to say cafe. Is that what cafe. you're laughing at too? No, I was laughing at you. I was also doofus. laughing. Oh, sorry. Was Clearly, also he laughing doesn't know what a land cafe is. I know what a land cafe is. I don't know what a land cafe is. I know what a cafe is from Majora's Mask. I don't know. Okay. I also, I also was laughing at cafe because of Majora's Mask. <laughs> yeah, that's like the hardest side quest in that game. It takes all three days. I know. <laughs> don't bring up that horror. <laughs> <laughs> like goddamn StarCraft conversation. Uh, for those who don't know, oh, uh, Jean-Luc Seipke, our producer in the back room, said that the trailer did say land support. Uh, oh, nice. Sweet. So for those who don't know, what did Brood War do to the base game? Uh, it basically added um, a bunch of units, essentially, that changed the way the game works. So Lurker was a huge one, which is like a sieging unit for the Zerg that you know could burrow, and then you it shoots out kind of like a line of spikes essentially but you'd have to have observers or you'd have to scan it so it it made you think more about those kind of things dark templar for for the protoss so it just changed how you thought about the game i guess because you had to worry about all these cloaked units that you didn't have to before um and kind of adapt your strategies to that medic was huge for Terran because it could heal your stimmed marines uh so it's just more of like a meta thing for the game uh, that's kind of how it changed, but I think Brood War made that game a lot better. Yeah, I mean, we were saying when this got announced, and we were talking about like Halo Wars Two came out this year as well, and it was kind of you know lackluster. Kelly, you reviewed it. I did review it. You gave it a six out of ten. Yes. Yeah, I didn't love it. Uh, it was an okay game, but it didn't like as a Halo fan and RTS fan, I was kind of hoping for a better blend of both, but I think they kind of went in both directions. Didn't have a good singular identity. Um, I also wanted to talk about the like kind of current state of the RTS genre because there aren't a lot releasing there's a decent amount and there's some cool interesting games coming out especially last year but it's nothing like huge i don't know if starcraft remastered will be enough to like kickstart another generation of no, these games but no way. 
I, I mean, ideally it would, but I don't think it will. But <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you live in an ideal world. Yeah, I, the, we need an optimist <laughs> sitting next to Crummy Curmudgeon. Oh, cr- sorry, that's a Twitter handle. It. A GameSpot fan, Crummy Curmudgeon, and I think it's you. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> you. Uh, it's Tay, you were saying. But uh, I mean, as a uh, if there was a remaster that I really want from Blizzard, it's actually Diablo Two. Yeah. I don't think it'll happen, but like everyone's. Or not everyone's, but some of the people in the office were immediately like, oh, they did StarCraft Remastered. Let's just do Diablo 2 Remastered. Because I spent so much time playing that game, and I think that would be really cool. I thought maybe they'd do it last year at BlizzCon because it was the 20th anniversary for Diablo, and I don't know. We'll see. I'd rather have that than StarCraft Remastered, but that's just me. It's just weird that, going back to the RTS stuff, I mean, last year was Total War Warhammer, Ashes of the Singularity, um, Homeworld, Deserts of Carrick. Uh, what was the... Offworld Trading Company, uh, Soren Johnson, who did, who was a lead designer in Civ Four, he released Offworld Trading Company, which is a really good game. It was one of my, it was like top. It was a really good game last year. Uh, and then Dawn of War Three is pretty close on the horizon. Yeah. Um, there, there's a decent amount of RTS games coming out in that space, but it doesn't seem like the audience is there anymore to make them huge, right? Like you mentioned, Command and Conquer. I have that um, like 15th anniversary edition uh, through Origin, and yeah. it's like 18 games or something red alert 2 is one of my favorite games period and i play that uh, every once in a while still but and i played homeworld last year that game was great ashes of the singularity was cool and the the scale that it portrayed you could zoom out and it would you could command like battalions but also yeah. single units and see like an entire planet technically impressive off-world training company was a cool take on uh, economy and how that could transfer into uh, the real-time strategy genre but i don't know there's nothing that's really you know, you see shooters had a watershed year oh, yeah. in 2016. Uh, yeah, here you see the clown from It. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> or the bellhop from Home Alone 2 yeah. if you're into that. Uh, I but, think, you know, the problem... Her- sorry, one more, one more. Herkimer <laughs> Homokov from uh, Congo. Oh there we go. God. Continue, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was certainly a time when, like, Redwood Studios was, like, pumping out new Command & Conquer games and, like, changing up settings and, like, adding a lot of new units and stuff where it felt like you could really pay attention to the RTS genre and get something new out of it every couple months or something to look forward to. But gaming as a whole, like especially on PC, has sort of blown up in so many ways now um, because it's borrowing a lot from consoles. You know, it, the RTS genre has kind of just disappeared, but I don't, I don't think it'll ever be like a huge mainstream success where like an RTS game is like upfront, but I think it'll always be around, you know, and yeah. we'll just have fewer players. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to see Offworld Trading Company come out and do something that really surprised a lot of people uh, like that would be cool to see. I think more experimentation within the genre. Yeah, it's weird for a, keep it alive. Yeah. Maybe like the early two thousands. There, uh, it seemed like every property. Not maybe not even early two thousands, but I mean, Battle for Middle Earth came out. I actually like those games. They kind of fell too much into the rock paper scissor formula of you know simpler RTS games. Um, I mean, Halo Wars is a great like. Yeah, I was gonna say like Halo Wars is is very much the the pared down simplified version, and I I actually did like the combination of like oh here's stuff for Halo fans and here's like a simpler RTS thing. I think it's good if you don't want the barrier to entry that a lot of RTS games have. Right. Um, but it's it's just like it's not doing anything new or different or interesting to keep your attention. Yeah. That's the biggest problem for me with that. Yeah, I was playing Homeworld finally uh, like late last year, and this was, I mean, a couple months before Halo Wars 2 came out, and that was actually, uh, Gearbox did that with, Gearbox released it, yeah, and uh, it was it was a good RTS, it was, they read, they took Homeworld from space and brought it to like the desert planet where it supposedly started, it was a prequel to all those if you were into those games back in the day, but I mean, turn-based strategy has been flourishing, like you have XCOM, you have Civilization, I'm just naming for access stuff right now, but of course <laughs> you have like Fire Emblem, you have... Well, that, that's super different, but it's still like it's such a integral part of like the RPG space. Mm-hmm. Um, off the top of my head, I know Banner Saga just had a collection release. You should play those games if you ha- uh, haven't yet. Those are on Xbox One now. Yes, or at least they're about to be. But are they? Is, did it release yet? Uh, I think it's on its way. Okay. I mean, but like in the next week, if it's not already out. Yeah. So you should play those if you play on Xbox One and haven't played Banner Saga one or two yet. Uh, not RTSs though. I I also just kind of. I'm wondering if there is going to be like that renaissance year for RTS. Like you said, it's n- never going to be as widespread as shooters. And last year, kind of, shooters will always be around, but last year it was a lot of innovation in that genre. And like yeah. you said, I don't think RTS has the same. 
I prevalence. Think, and it's more than shooters too. It's just you know like games like Mass Effect, like you know just are like bigger like grand scale games that some, maybe have an art an RPG element to them or something. But sort of these grander adventures because when you're managing like little units on a field, like that doesn't feel maybe as exciting to a lot of people. I think right off the bat, you really have mm-hmm. to get through the barrier to entry that Callie was mentioning for a lot of these games to experience what makes them so great. Mm-hmm. They don't have that instant gratification. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest barrier. I also think too. Uh, I think someone in Twitch chat, I think it's Console Hot ninety two, had mentioned too that with the kind of flourishing of MOBAs, yeah, like you know Dota two, League of Legends, maybe Heart of the, uh, geez, Heroes, Heroes of the Storm. Sorry, Hot, same <laughs> acronym. Um, maybe a lot of the people that used to play RTS games because you know that Dota basically came out from Warcraft right. two or three from three, three I think. Yeah. Um, and maybe a lot of those players have kind of transitioned over to MOBAs. Right. And so because of that, you're losing kind of like your player yeah. base for RTS games as well. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, if you pay attention, there are a decent amount of RTS games coming out and they're of high quality, a few of them. I really liked Homeworld if you haven't played that yet. Uh, if you're like a Halo fan, kind of passing fan of RTS, Halo Wars 2 might satisfy that itch. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, like I gave it a, I didn't hate it, so it's. Yeah, uh, but for all, you know, Kind of waiting, like go play Off World Trading Company. That game is awesome, mm-hmm. uh, and it's really cool. It, like, like I said, it's the lead designer of uh, Civilization Four, so he took the economy aspects of Civilization games. He played those and kind of made it into a real time strategy game on Mars. You're founding, you're settling Mars with these corporations, and it's uh, really, really engaging and fun, and uh, more intense than you might think in an economy based game. But anyway, let us know if uh, we missed any RTS games. I'm sure we did. I know we did. Uh, let us know which ones you've played throughout the years, which ones you might want to see remastered, just like uh, StarCraft is getting with its uh, summer release coming from Blizzard. Again, we will update you more with the price and the actual specific release date when we find out. All right. For those just joining, we are going to get to Persona 5. But right now, I want to talk about Destiny 2, a game we don't know much about. <laughs> um, yeah. So here's... Here's Tay, why he came on the show. Well, no, StarCraft, you know StarCraft. Oh, thanks too. for nothing, Mike. I was just joking. <laughs> Jeez. Um, well, we want to talk about what we want in Destiny 2 because we don't know much about it. The The leak said September 8th release date a couple weeks ago, but that hasn't been confirmed. But there has been this teaser trailer and a teaser image for Destiny 2 um, from Bungie. And we've been expecting this for a while, waiting for them to actually announce it. Now that there's been how many expansions? Three for Destiny? Taken Cur- King? Uh, four. 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 Yeah, yeah. Dark Below, yeah. Taken King. House of Wolves, House of Wolves, Wolves Rise, Rise of Iron. Iron. Rise of Iron. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, Taken King was the main one that actually kind of revamped how the game worked. So uh, I kind of want to just get right into it. Callie, what do you want? Do you have anything specific you want from Destiny 2 or broad strokes? What do you hope they do better? Um, I'm hoping that because there were some things in Destiny, especially vanilla Destiny, and then um, I felt this in Rise of Iron also that just felt like chores. Like I felt like grinding for light in a lot of ways. Um, the reward started to taper off for me, um, just just because when the 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 story is lacking, kind of revisiting the same things and trying to get into a world can be hard for me. Um, and I think the teaser trailer sort of indicated that they're leaning into a little bit more um, like character personality or uh, world building, especially because he's talking about like at the end it kind of zooms out and there's there's this blown out building it's yeah like, oh, something because clearly happened um so i'm hoping that that is indicative of the not necessarily the tone because he's cade six is very snarky i don't think the whole game is gonna be snarky but um nathan Fillion. yeah <laughs> but uh i i'm hoping that there's just a, a little bit more incentive to to keep revisiting i mean i like grinding like i like grinding for for better loot and i enjoy that and i mean that that's why i kept playing destiny um but I think the long tail was a little a little bit of a struggle for me um, with that. Um, when Taken King released, it seemed like they were, like you said, putting, you know, revamping the systems of the game and how mm-hmm. it worked in terms of uh, progression. But they also seemed like they were putting a little more emphasis, or at least starting to put more emphasis on characterization yes. and storytelling with those cutscenes where they characterized Cade Six. What are the other Vanguard leaders' names? I forget. Zavala. Zavala. Was a titan. Ikora? No, Zavala is the titan. Ikora, Ikora is, is the warlock. warlock. Okay, yeah. so they seem yeah, like they were actually warlock. putting more effort into telling that story because when Destiny first released, when we see all of these uh, trailers back before it released in 2014, yeah, September 2014, Taken sure. King was 15, yeah. uh, before it released a few years ago, <laughs> nice. we kind of saw, like, oh, the people that made Halo and Marathon are going into this MMO space that combines with shooters and it's going to be our solar system, kind of like a Mass Effect of... Um, 
you know, like a reimagined uh, solar system we live in. And it was really appealing. But then when we played this game, it seemed like there wasn't as much to it as we hoped, or at least we didn't really fully understand what it was. Like they kept saying, this is in many ways going to be a platform for us to build upon. Mm -hmm. And I think those among us who are excited for different reasons kept saying, well, I would still like to see them explore some cool storytelling in this. Because I like, I like Halo's storytelling. Yeah, um, yeah me too. And I just, I love sci-fi storytelling in general, and I think there's just so much potential there, and I, I love the the feel of shooting in this game, and that I I want to combine that with a little, something a little bit more substantial. And I think, yeah. like I said, I think maybe the last episode or two episodes ago on the lobby, um, I think, you know, rectifying the stuff with uh, Dinklebot uh, <laughs> <laughs> indicates that they, they, they kind of figured that out, and they started to take steps in that direction, so I'm I feel like that is promising for Destiny 2. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. They went through a good year of just quality of life changes as yeah. well as knowing, as you had, had as you had mentioned, Kelly, that their story was a little weak and they're trying to revamp that. And I think they did a good job with that again with, as Mike said too, uh, you know, with Taken King, there was like this huge kind of push and that's kind of what got you back in the game too was mm. that there was so much more kind of interacting with the NPCs. There was more just story there. And I think... And hope that they've learned a lot through this this year that they found a nice kind of balance for both the hardcore and the more casual player. Um, Aaron would love to have some type of raid make uh, raid matchmaking, which is not in the game yet, yeah, which is debatable. Which is debatable because I'm on one side of the fence. I wouldn't want to do the raid with strangers. <laughs> but, but but what they what they could do is they could do it like WoW, where they simplify the raid. Mm -hmm. um, for the raid making group, but then they don't get as good of a reward for it. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So then they get like a lower tier version of like, if you did it normally with your friends or something like that. That would, that would though, be if you a way. Didn't have any friends who played? I, well, I'm just no, gonna stop it. Any friends? But, <laughs> but it would be sad if you didn't have any friends. But, but the but. thing though is, at least with that, they can still experience the raid, albeit maybe not the the full version of it, but yeah. something similar. Still get the raid experience, which I think is very important to the game the, the raid is like super key i don't think you can skip the raid yeah if you really want to get the full experience um and that was what the the bright spot for rise of iron for me was the raid mm. i really enjoyed it yeah. um but i don't I, I don't know i like that idea i would get really nervous i don't want to do the raid with strange <laughs> well we'll see i mean just more matchmaking in general yeah. too because you know nightfall and stuff like that i don't uh you know those things are, are things that you might have trouble doing um, on your own, mm -hmm. but at the same time right now, they kind of got around that problem by having LFG stuff on, on online that yeah. you can then look for other people. And generally people are pretty serviceable. They know what they're doing, right? Yeah. So, And I do think that would help maybe more casual players. Like if you don't have a group that's like dedicated to raiding, like, oh, we're gonna raid like every Wednesday yeah. or whatever it is, um, it would be helpful to, because if you're a casual player who's not gonna do that, you aren't necessarily looking for the best loot yeah. anyway. So, I mean, that is. Yeah. That was the biggest pain point, but. I think for some of the people in the office was, they did most of what the game had to offer and they wanted to do the raid, but then it was hard because it would take somebody to be like, okay, I'm gonna try to assemble this raid. Yeah, yeah. it's a commitment. And, yeah, it's a commitment. It's a time commitment. Yeah, or you have somebody who, things. like, you need to carry somebody through the raid so they can get better gear so mm -hmm. you can properly do the raid. And it's, yeah, there's just, like, a lot of complications yeah. there. But, to like I said, they've added a lot of good stuff. So, yeah. like, everything they've added also for this last kind of, like, hurrah ter in terms of, like, their content drop um, for Destiny 1 has been good. Like, I think all that, all the quality of life stuff enhances the game a lot better than what it was like de vanilla destiny where mm -hmm. you used to have to you know grind materials Ugh. like mmo style where you walk around and pick up like relic iron and stuff like that yeah. which is super annoying now it's like way easier it's just a better kind of experience mm -hmm. to not totally waste your time i guess they respect your time a little bit more mm -hmm. i also definitely want the app to make a comeback because oh, i yeah, love being able good. to switch gear mm -hmm. like super easily yeah. i don't have to do the vault garbage Love it. I love the app. I used to, when I first started playing Destiny, I would like go to work and like just be on the app looking, like reading the lore because mm -hmm. I like couldn't stop thinking about Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> if you play it on Nintendo Switch, you could use the app on the tablet. God, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what you say? I wish that would come out on Switch. I don't never will. think that. <laughs> no, but it never maybe, will. Maybe. What if it comes out on PC yeah. and you can now get those people that maybe don't have a console mm -hmm. and wanted to play it? And maybe you can somehow play with PC. I mean, I know Windows, or sorry, I know Xbox One has done a good job of like crossplay with 
Windows and, Ish, and X, yeah. kind of, right? So it's kind of there. I know Street Fighter Five has it with PS4 and PC, kind of. So it'll be interesting if they can figure that out because I think that would kind of expand the player base. Do you guys yeah. expect there's going to be like sort of a <clears throat> a small gimmicky VR component? Not like a huge mission, but like <laughs> try on not. your gear. Look at this little area. I mean... It, I'd be shocked if it didn't have it. I think it really. I think it will have. I mean, I'm not talking about anything substantial or like this is a selling point for the game. Well, I mean, because there is like you get content first on PS4. Maybe there's a PSVR. Do angle, we know that for like, sure though? You, I mean, but with Destiny, like with, with Destiny, original Destiny, current Destiny, is what I. Yeah. But like, I don't know. You're talking about two out of three platforms is coming out on have VR support, right? Yeah. And and they're obviously not going to try to sell the game or have it live and die by its VR support because I don't think it'll be substantial, but. Yeah, I, I'd be shocked if they didn't try a little bit of something to give people just like, just a little taste of, you know, like a different way of looking at this world mm-hmm. and sort of being within it. Last question. Uh, Let's put money on it because you guys don't, you I guys don't, don't think. I, um, oh, a bet. Yeah. No, I think. Funny I would, you should mention bets. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eric Tay. Yeah. Before Taken King came oh out. My God, oh, my God. God. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, you and I had a bet to see who can get. To level forty, the new uh, level cap mm-hmm. first. Yeah. Uh, so John Luke's gonna roll something here. This oh, is me and you son playing. Of a... I believe he's gonna bring audio up. Uh, so here's here Irish axe. That's me. Of course, that's you. Here we have bounties saved up. <laughs> and apologies if I'm talking over this because I don't I don't know if there's audio right now. Jean Luke, is there audio playing for the stream? <laughs> Dead silence. Yeah. Uh, so this is. The stream we did. And I turned a bunch of these in. You're like, holy shit, I just got to level 37 in like 10 seconds. And me and Tay had a steak dinner riding on who would get to level 40 <laughs> first. And yeah, cut away from me. He didn't even <laughs> show it. Luke. Woo, you oh man. my God. He didn't yeah, man, even we show saw nothing. It. You blew it. We saw nothing. <laughs> Damn there. it. All right. Well, I won. Uh, we ended up, I ended up, because I got to it so easy that within like 10 minutes, we turned in bounties we had saved up yeah. before Tank King came out and I got to level 40. Right before you, only because you're like, I could crush you right now and get to level 40. So then I just like started. I know. Tapping. You know what else you had that I, I didn't have on? I never got steak. I got you a sandwich, though. I bought you lunch. Was it a steak sandwich? Yeah, really. I don't know. If you got me sushi, sandwich. which is fine. Yeah. Sushi is a good alternative, I think. So we we didn't think that turning in all our bounties would just get us to level 40. Yeah. But somehow it did that. Also, you have the stupid cloak that gives plus 10% experience. You had it too. You just I weren't didn't wearing it. it. I yes, didn't have you it. did. <laughs> they gave it to you at the beginning of Taken King. You didn't just use the sparkle no, uh, light sheet? For your, for your new subclass, yes. Um, yeah, whatever. But yeah, I did lose this. Also, if you just watch this, another fun fact, quality of life thing is, you know how you had to go here to turn in your bounties? You don't have to do that anymore. You can do that in your menu. No, no, no. You had to turn in year one bounties to him in oh, person. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, anyway. Okay. I just wanted yeah, to love that in his face once again. It's been two years since that happened. Uh, it's actually funny. I was watching the stream. We both look pretty young. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> what? Uh, anyway. Okay. Sweet. So that's Destiny 2. We hope we're going to get out of it and what they're going to learn from the expansions that Destiny released. Uh, again, it was a rumored September 8th release date. We don't have that confirmed yet. March 30th, Bungie's going to be making the announcement. Uh, that's the that's reveal, tomorrow. right? Tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's Today's the 29th? Reveal. Yeah, my yeah. sister's birthday. Of March? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cool. Your so tomorrow. a couple days after your birthday? Yeah. That sucks. But Keep six years prior. Oh. oh. Keep an eye on GameSpot.com for the announcement or whatever is coming tomorrow, the stream. Is that what it is? Is Deej going to be doing a stream? No, I think There's it's just like trailer. a trailer. Like oh, a, a trailer. 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 Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that will be on GameSpot.com. Yeah. You can go check that out and stay tuned here as until September <laughs> when we will I tell you how this game is. Maybe. I feel like yeah. I feel like we'll see something at E3. I don't know if we'll get like hands-on or anything like that, but I wouldn't be shocked if we saw something at E3. We, we have to, right? I think, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. I guarantee. Oh. You're on the hook. For I don't know now. why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The game of the hour, the release date, or the the release embargoes went up this morning. Review embargo. Review embargo. What did I say? Release Release embargo. embargo. It's the same thing. Nope. No, it's not. Review embargoes went up this morning. (laughs) Our our very own Lucy James over in the UK reviewed Persona 5. Yeah. Uh, Last week, we talked about, could this be your first in the series? I'm back to answer that question. Yeah, it can. Wow. This is my first game in the series. I'm really liking it. I played it till 4 a.m. Yeah, he came in the office. He's like, I love Persona. It's so cool. I, t- I like ripped my clothes off and started <laughs> chanting. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I want to ask you guys what your Persona would be, uh, but we'll get into that, of course. Uh, anyway, 
This game uh, released in Japan how long ago? I want to say last December? Um, no, no, no September. I think it was September, September because September. everyone went to TGS, TGS and yeah. came back with copies. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that they were saying based on that version was phenomenal game. I can't read Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I think the story's Nani. good. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this game is fun. I mean, I like it a lot. We, like I said last week on the lobby, I don't know the series. I really like, uh, I mean, What surprised RPGs. you about it? Uh, it Actually, at first I was kind of like, I don't get why people like this. I mean, it was fun. Uh, I do like, I have a few things I want to talk about, actually. Uh, it's subverting a lot of my expectations of um, I know sometimes you think this is a problematic term, JRPG. I don't think it's a problematic term. I just think it's a dumb term. Okay. Well, <laughs> for the intent of this conversation, I like like Eastern RPGs, that style as opposed <laughs> oh to... Oh my God, God, that's worse. Just say JRPG. Wow. I like JRPGs. <laughs> um, I, I enjoy, you know, like turn-based kind of grind-heavy RPGs. I don't play them as much as I would like to because... You know, like nature of our job, we have to play a lot of games, but they're very time consuming. Exactly. And I actually think this game makes that grind interesting and fun. So uh, for those who don't know, there are like kind of two sides to Persona games. I mean, Cal, you played a lot of these. You want to? Well, yeah, I mean, there's the the traditional JRPG going into like a dungeon sort of area and doing a turn based battle. And then there's the slice of life, a little more anime, like you're a high school student and after school you get to kind of choose your activities. And that's been expanded a lot in Persona 5. There's more stuff you can do. Um, so yeah, there's like two, two sides to it and you can, uh, you know, get to know your compatriots. I don't know why that was the only word I could think confidants. of. Confidants. Sexy friends. But they, call, they call them confidants in the game. You are cool high school friends. Um, and so I, I like that kind of balance. I, I think I said this last week, but I love slice of life. Um, and I, I just love having kind of that, uh, not respite cause I don't think the rest of it is like a chore or anything, but just having a step back to breathe a little bit and, uh, explore Tokyo and, and get into the world a little bit more, uh, in between, you know, what, what you're converting people's hearts, you're fixing bullies and stuff. There's yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, like again to clarify, uh, Lucy James, who reviewed it for us, she has loved the series and or she's knowledgeable about the, about the series and she knows what Persona Five does differently. For a more in depth look at that, please read the review, watch the review. I don't have that same history, so I wanted to approach it with you guys, mm -hmm. kind of asking me questions about my first experience with the series. And uh, the one thing I like about it, when you mentioned those slice of life, that social aspect, mm -hmm. I didn't really enjoy high school in real life. So why would I care about doing laundry the and you know being this problematic? teenager and going to high school in Tokyo because anime high school is where it's at but this <laughs> game is completely I didn't know how dark it would get it really? like right off the bat right it's, away it's yeah. extremely dark yeah, yeah I didn't know that I see Jean-Luc had mentioned Jean-Luc knows Persona really well. he's like yeah people see this it's a very stylish game and like acid jazz soundtrack and then when you get into battles kind of hard rock very colorful and like I mean you can see now like the the UI and the the HUD and the menus are all like Super stylized in this. I don't yeah. even know well, how to describe it. Peel away the superficial layer, and you find a game that touches on things yeah. that most games like don't. <laughs> yeah, it's like really deep like, human connections and yeah. suicide and fun stuff like that. And I, you mentioned those slice of life things, and I was like, I wish I want to play this game, but I don't care about that stuff. But I actually think because that stuff can be a grind, but in the sense that you're spending all the time, right? So it almost reminded me, and this is a dumb comparison, but this is my first thing off the bat. I was explaining this to someone in our office who really likes Grand Theft Auto, like a lot of people. When you are doing a heist in Grand Theft Auto, you go around preparing for it, right? Mm -hmm. And as thieves in the metaverse, kind of like the Matrix world in Persona, you are going into palaces, these manifestations, these uh, psychological manifestations of people's inner desires and personalities, and you are trying mm -hmm. to find their treasure, which will is essentially their their core yes. of their desires, which in, like I said, in this game, some people's desires that they act on are kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of exposing these bad people in the real world by going into their psychological metaverse. And as thieves, you're preparing for these so like heists, so to speak. And that's where the high school stuff actually interested me because I was, you have a time limit, right? You have like two weeks. And I was saying, okay, do I want to go work my part-time job and get 2,800 yen so I can buy a new weapon tomorrow or save up for a new armor later on? Or do I want to go increase my proficiency by going to the batting cages or to the gym? Yeah. So then 
uh, w later on when I have the chance to use that, that social stat will help me in the metaverse. I mean, like t time management is such a big part of that. Like being able to maximize your time for what you want to do is so important. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, that's something I really love. Uh, and it sounds, oh, I don't know, it almost sounds like too nerdy, but I'm just like, I want to make sure I do everything perfectly that I almost get like, I have to take a break and really think about yeah. it. Um, and so it's like even more time consuming than the what hundred hours it took everybody to beat the game for review. Yeah, I think they're saying average is like 105. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that seems like a lot, but I, I want to keep playing it for other reasons. But I do like that there is a time limit before you have to go into the palaces or else you just get game over. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing boring stuff and you're getting to know these characters, which I want to get into as well. But I think that the fact there is a time limit on these things that I would otherwise consider grinding makes them a little more intense knowing mm -hmm. that you're about to go into this person's palace or that dude, Kamoshida. Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, um, but these are all memorable people already, and I've only played eight hours of this game. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the characters are also very engaging, but at first I was like, oh, these just seem like JRPG tropes. They seem like RPG tropes in general, and then they start subverting that, actually, with uh, you have like the punk like rebel one, um, Ryuji, mm -hmm. and then you have the main characters, kind of the uh, reticent, uh, sarcastic one. Uh, I named mine Shooter McGavin. Um, <laughs> I'm the shooter. <laughs> um, and then you have On, Lady On, who right now, and then you have uh, Morgana, the cat. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool. Everybody has guns right here, and I was like, what is going on? But apparently like, in the real world, those are model guns, but because you're in the metaverse, people see them, they think they're real, and they manifest as real guns in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gets into some cool like Matrix alternate reality stuff where Obviously, people who know the series know that your persona will kind of flourish in the metaverse. Uh, Pete, you were saying some. A lot of times, it's like the suppressed part of people's real world personality that comes out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At least at the beginning. Yeah. That's sort of like like your stand in like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That, that <laughs> anime. <laughs> no, like the uh, actual. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was gonna say the actual storyline is about a lot of these characters, and because it's high school. I actually think that setting fits because there are rumors floating around and everybody yeah. has these surface level assumptions about people. And I kind of fell into that trap. I saw on and I had these assumptions or at least people had these rumors. You kind of overhear these incidental conversations and then people have heard these rumors about your character and mm -hmm. people hear these things about Ryuji and how he's a thug and a, like a rebel. And then I found out stuff that about Ryuji's home life and I found out stuff about on that actually plays a big part of her character, how people take her beauty right. and just don't look past it. And then in, uh, the metaverse, her like sexuality actually, her char her persona is very sexual uh, person. It's like almost like you kind of saw it as like a dominatrix, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like I think in the real world she suppresses that stuff because she feels like she has to, and that is when it gets interesting. It takes these character archetypes and actually starts taking what my expectations were of them based on these rumors and these things that they were saying. But then I got to know them through that slice of life stuff, and I was like, holy shit, this is actually really cool to see how that manifests and changes in the metaverse. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, she's one of the most relatable characters for me so far. I'm not very far in um, because of that, and I, I relate to that a lot. Um, and I think Persona in general, and especially Persona 5, does a great job of, of making you want to do the mundane things because it enriches everything. Um, getting to know the characters and like developing characters is such a strong suit. Um, and I think that the main, like having to go in and see somebody's core, like what's at the core of them is is so cool and like such a good way to do that. Um, that it like I mean you because you were saying you didn't you weren't thinking you would like the slice of life stuff, but I think it does a good job of making people who aren't into that more into it. I mean like I was already like so stoked to I'm like I'm gonna go to anime high school, can't <laughs> wait. I'm gonna take a test. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but um, I just think it's so so intelligently done. Yeah, I mean it was. I really actually liked that I kind of started appreciating that those social so a lot of it's quantified obviously you get like a, a rank for that uh, person's persona so the more the closer you get to them the more you learn about them it'll go up and you'll learn new skills through that that you can use in combat which we can talk about the combat um but again the writing was enough to it's it's like melodramatic in a lot of parts but it is very anime it's anime i mean there are anime cutscenes at certain parts oh yeah. they're beautiful yeah they're too. really they're good beautifully animated i mean there are already 
I, I knew they would be because there are Persona anime yeah, already. Yeah. But yeah. I just, uh, I was so delighted. It like opens with, I mean, I like that you're kind of thrust into this immediate like foot race opening. Mm -hmm. um, and starts, like the game starts immediately and then there's just like beautiful anime lights and scenery. I just, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the series, but apparently Persona 4 took a while to get in, like it was so very slow at the beginning. Yes, it is. five just kind of throws you right into it, yeah. but it's kind of a it, red. It herring. dials it back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for a second. But yeah, for the slow burn is what, or the slow start. I just I couldn't get into it. But this yeah. game definitely it it invigorates you. It makes you very curious what's happening, mm -hmm. it, both for the conflicts it presents and the spectacle at the same time. Yeah, very good at the start. What, how do you guys feel about the voiceovers? Because I find them to be a little bit grating. I... Um, there is a patch for Japanese voices like out I cannot play I don't like playing JRPGs with English voiceover especially if the if the setting is super what I don't know I thumbs up, up that because well, I, f I agree with you. especially if the setting is if we're in Tokyo right, yeah, and right. we're in a clearly Japanese high school environment and everybody's names are Japanese uh, uh, they pronounce uh, Sakamoto as Sakamoto so, and yeah that's super annoying bothers I've me noticed so that so much <laughs> yeah. um, and yeah so I'm excited to be able to switch to Japanese yeah. VO I it's not it, like hurting the experience for me but it Dude. is like it Ryuji's voice is really kind of rough yeah I thought so he reminded me of like an old Ninja Turtles cartoon well it's so that happens a lot with anime dubs of um thug-ish characters right, yeah. like when you're the, the thug archetype um there's actually another anime where the thug character's name is Ryuji um that I'm thinking of where the the dub voices are just like they try to lean too hard into the anime archetype yeah. and so it just comes off as so grating um and I just I think it's like something that gets lost in translation literally yeah. uh, where it's like oh like you like for example when uh, Osaka Ben gets translated into like southern dialect in English it's like mm, that's not quite right right and that's the, the sentiment is there but the execution doesn't make sense yeah it's like okay we get that Osaka is supposed to be like backwoods like in theory but the southern accent doesn't work and so right. it's very similar in English is that where the main character is supposed to be from no, no, no. That's just an example of oh. things that in dubbed uh, anything that's been translated from Japanese to English. Yeah. Um, when you're trying gotcha. to translate something like Yakuza dialect, uh, when you try to sound like a New York gangster, <laughs> it's just not right. Well, and there's a quality that, especially with Yakuza, with like the rolling of the R's and all of that and the you're gruffness. Like, like, Oreto Aniki. Like, yeah, like it's yeah. why, why change it? you know preserve it even if the language is different because yeah. i think there's some sentiment behind that stuff yeah. that you need yeah absolutely we don't have a crazy amount of time left but i do want to get into the dungeon crawling combat what are you, mm -hmm. so how far are you into it i'm not very far okay. honestly i played like four different games yesterday i'm juggling okay a lot so i've games. done the first palace like dungeon crawl i've gotten the first uh treasure the treasures mm -hmm. are the core of their Desire yeah. personalities, whatever uh, they say. Really quickly, it is notable that previous Persona games were procedurally generated dungeons, yeah. and this only has one area that's procedurally generated. Most for of, grinding. Yeah, for grind, the like grinding area, it's like mementos, I think. Yeah. Um, this is, they're all like hand uh, crafted dungeons. Yeah, and I do like it. They, the combat is. They do a cool. I didn't realize how hard this can get if you don't. And if you yeah. don't prepare for the palace, the crawls. You, if you don't have enough items, especially I've been uh, for like action points. I've been low on, so I've been using like melee. And hey guys, you have limited ammo. We got and a wrap. We don't okay. have a ton of time left, like I said. But um, I think the combat's great. I love uh, fusing persona for the main character. You can mm -hmm. actually um, create new persona. You'd have to kill old parts of your persona to fuse them with new ones to make. Uh, you know, like different, you know, like kind of classes of persona and get different abilities and everything. Just, just to wrap, I guess probably my favorite thing is the negotiation stuff that you have yeah, to do yeah, yeah. when you get to like play with demons and like sort of figure out like how you can take advantage of them. But they often turn the tables and take advantage of yeah. you because they think, yeah, because you think that you know everything. But yeah, you, you can know. say, give me an item. It's a hold up. If you stun everybody in the party using elemental weaknesses or getting critical hits or using weapons when they're weak to them, everybody party like goes and points the guns at them and say, give me an item, give me money or lend me your power if you don't have that persona yet. And they'll say, I have to see if it would be a good fit or something like that. And the higher level ones will ask more riddles than actual just yeah. flat out show you their personality. So this one guy, I can tell he's just mischievous. So I would just did the, and you have like three response choices. And if you get, if you make a bond with them right there, then you can get their persona and down the road, fuse it with another one to make it stronger. And I really like those. Or you could just do an all out attack when everybody just yeah. fucking destroys them. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, like I said, you can go watch the more in-depth video review uh, and read the review by Lucy James. Uh, her and Tamor put a lot of time into the game. Miguel Concepcion here played a lot of it, and he's been doing a lot of guide stuff and capturing for us. And he's gonna we're gonna have more Persona Five coverage on Gamespot.com. So stay tuned for that and go play this game. It's fun. Cool. That was a good show. That was a show. Welcome back. Yeah, Thank you. We Welcome back to the lobby. Thanks. Uh, when Destiny's announced, we'll bring you on. No, I'm just joking. We'll bring you on. Soon. Yeah. That could be next week. No. <laughs> yes. Not happening. Uh, I would normally ask you what you guys have going on. But like I said, we have uh, Hunter Pence is coming in. In half an hour, we're going to be streaming from GameSpot uh, on GameSpot, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, MLB 17 with the right fielder for the San Francisco Giants, Hunter Pence, who also happens to stream on Twitch and play a lot of games. So he knows what he's talking about. And I'm sure he finds it pretty cool that he's in video games now. Uh, but they're also, him and Nick Margarita here at GameSpot are going to be uh, creating characters and playing the road to the show mode and also the retro mode, which is kind of like limited interface and also like two buttons, I think. Uh, it looks pretty cool. But yeah, so stay tuned for that. And then tomorrow, Triforce, Pete and Rob will be playing Zelda Breath of the Wild for an hour. You know it. Uh, Rob Hanley and I will be streaming Titanfall 2's new DLC tomorrow. So we have a lot of streams this week. Uh, again, Persona 5 review is up. We'll have more Destiny news when it's coming out. We'll have more StarCraft news once the prize is announced uh, and when the release date is announced for this summer. And also, follow GameSpot if you play Xbox One games and you want to play Mafia 3 or just get that collector's edition. There is the new free trial for the game and also the DLC. This right here, retweet GameSpot's tweet. Shiva will be tweeting it. And cool. Thanks so much for joining us as always. I'm going to go play more Persona. Uh, watch that MLB stream. Thanks for joining me everyone <laughs> cheers and, best uh, girl oh my god thanks for joining us everyone we'll see you next week bye